Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first YouTube episode. I'm Rob from FHG Marine Engineering. And uh, today we're going to go on a service call that we received earlier in the day, in which uh, one of our clients was unable to start his engines. He was uh, over at a sandbar, and I guess they uh, fired up momentarily, and then both of them shut down together. Um, and then he waited a little while and he's able to recover them and restart them and then back at the dock he had the same symptom where the engines would crank uh, but he wasn't getting them to pop off or start. Uh, so the engines would just roll over and uh, they were unable to fire them up. So uh, we're going to head out on the trouble call and we're going to go see if we can figure out what's going on. This is on a uh, 55 Ocean with a pair of MAN 800 engines. So. Uh, we're gonna take you along for the ride and uh, let's go check it out, see if we can figure out what's going on. Got aboard the boat and we're going to uh, take a look around, just make some initial uh, findings, conditions, uh, see what we got going on. Um, obviously we're going to try and crank the motors up ourselves and just get a baseline, determine uh, what we think is the cause of the issue that's going on with the random shutdown. A um, couple of things we want to look at uh, just from coming down to the boat here, we want to look at uh, obviously fuel supply, we want to look at electronics, our uh, our engine shutdown solenoid. We also want to look at any interlocks that are shared between the two engines, so from the ZF drives um, as well as any kind of interlocks for electronics, any kind of safety shutdown permissives that need to be met to ensure that both engines are safe to start. So we're going to kind of go through those uh, step by step and see what we find out. So uh, let's take a look around. So one thing we're going to look at is our uh, Raycor filter sets here. We want to make sure those are filled up prime, that the valve is open, and also our fuel supply valve to the tank, and also any return valve uh, going back to the tank return side of the system, and just make sure all that stuff's lined up. Obviously, if we don't have fuel to the engine, we can't fire it up. Uh, we're kind of going to skip over the, the cranking circuit, because we know that the starter will roll the engine over. So we're not worried about anything on that side of the circuit, but we are worried about fuel and we're also worried about the uh, shutoff solenoid, uh, keeping the fuel rack at the zero position, not letting any fuel into the engine. So our fuel shutoff solenoid is uh, mounted right up here. We have the cover off already now, so we can put a meter on that and check. So when we go to roll the engine over, we'll see if that releases from the zero fuel position and goes to full fuel to get the engine to fire up or if it stays in the zero fuel position for shutdown or shut off. Okay, we're up here on the bridge and first thing we want to check is our uh, ZF panel. We want to make sure our two lights are illuminated and that both uh, forward and reverse shift levers for the port and starboard mains are in neutral position and that will allow the engine to crank. If those come out of neutral and either forward or reverse that's going to interlock the engine and prevent cranking although that's not our issue today where we are able to crank the engine it just won't start but something obviously you want to check when you're just going through your troubleshoots to make sure that's not an issue up on the bridge he's going to hit the ignition switch on to energize the electrical circuit so we're going to go ahead and watch the solenoid and we'll see it go to the stop position all right so you see there, the uh, stop solenoid went to the stop position now that the ignition is on and the engine is stopped. So the next thing we're going to do is try and crank the engine and we'll watch that stop solenoid to see if it releases and allows the rack to go to full fuel for starting. Alright, so from there you can see that the stop solenoid stays in the stop position and the engine just cranks with no fuel. 
So we definitely have some type of interlock or permissive that's not being met to allow the engine to start. And then we're gonna do, go ahead and do the same thing on the starboard side and see what that does. All right, so ignition is on on starboard. We're gonna try and crank it, the same thing. And we can see the same symptom where the engine will roll on the starter, but it will not start and the fuel stop solenoid is staying in the stop position. All right, so one interlock we're gonna look at between the two engines is the, uh, the Fireboy system or the automatic engine shutdown. So when this uh, fusible link is released at a certain temperature in the engine room to simulate a fire, basically this pressure switch here is gonna show open and it's gonna shut the engines down. So that's gonna prevent this uh, suppression system from being sucked out through the engines and allow it to do its job here in the space. So we're gonna take a, a multimeter and just test the switch to make sure it is closed and it's not causing a shutdown scenario on these engines. So we'll see here we're only reading 0.3 ohms, which means the switch is closed. So there's no issue with this switch uh, that should be sh shutting down the engines. All right, our next check, we're gonna go up to the Fireboy uh, panel itself where the relays are wired in and just double check that there isn't an issue with the board. All right, so here's the Fire Boy relay box, and over here we have the port, uh, shutdown, starboard, and the generator. So this going through a normally open relay, then when this pressure switch pops open from release, this relay closes, and that's going to prevent the engines from starting, or it's actually going to shut down the engines in the uh, real life scenario. All right, so you see here that the circuit is now closed, which means that the engines are in essentially shutdown. So even though we checked the pressure switch, this relay is now in the closed position. So that's gonna force the engines to shut down. And we will just now verify. Yep, and the starboard engine's in the same position, so that's gonna cause the shutdown as well. So the problem here is within the circuit board Basically these uh, relays, I don't know if the contacts froze or they burned up or whatever, but with the pressure switch closed, it is still keeping these in the, uh, the relays in the closed position, not allowing the engine to start. So they are in basically shutdown mode. So what we're gonna do now is just pull uh, one of these leads off each side to basically bypass the board, leaving the circuit open, and then we're gonna try and start the engine up. And we're just gonna unscrew these right out of here, pull the spades out, and just leave these open. And basically that opens the circuit to restore them back to normal where the engines should start up. So let's try that out. Okay, so now with the Fireboy circuit basically bypassed, um, where both the circuits are open, it's in normal mode, or we're basically simulating normal mode by removing the wires off the relay board. So now we're gonna try and start both the port and the starboard engine. All right, so there's uh, basically the problem. Um, we figured that out. It was the Fireboy relay box. It was basically uh, something was wrong, I guess, with the relays and the contacts were burned up and they were holding the switches in the closed position. So even though the bottle switch was closed and it was uh, simulating or displaying basically that we had bottle pressure, that the system did not go off, it should keep those relays in the open position, allowing the engine to run. And then when the bottle switch opens, the relays close and force the engines to shut down by cutting the fuel off with the stop solenoids. So we basically just proved that by uh, pulling those two spades off, unwiring it from the relay board, and then boom, the engines came right to light. So we know that that board, that Fireboy boy relay board is burned up. So we're gonna go ahead and get one on order and uh, we're gonna come back and replace it and everything should be good to go. All right, so here we have our new Fireboy uh, engine shutdown override system. Uh, for this boat, we're using the model ES3000-1, which is a 24 volt and has three circuits. So for a port engine, starboard engine, and a generator. And it comes with the new 
uh, display with the normal override switch and it will tell you if it's been activated and it comes with the new relay box so we're going to be hooking this up with the normal open circuits and coming across here to the port ignition, starboard ignition, and generator ignition and then the pressure switch gets wired in here which is uh, normally closed if the system bottle is charged. Okay first thing we're going to do is just remove the old uh, display panel here. We're just, just held in by that backing clamp which we already removed. So Rich here is going to pull out the wiring harness which is just plug and play, simple enough. Pull the old one out and we're going to drop the new one in. Alright we're all done uh, wiring the new board up. The last thing we got to do is just connect the uh, harness that goes to the little readout display. Uh, a little bit of corrosion on the plug here so we're just going to get this wire brushed up, put a little dielectric grease on the connection, put that back together and then we should be good to go. Okay now that everything's wired up we'll just do a quick ohms check across the relay and you'll see there we're showing uh, 7 mega ohms which is open which is what we want and we'll check the other starboard engine we got 3.6 mega ohms so that's open also and then basically what would happen is if we uh, release the bottle downstairs or open that pressure switch which is across those two leads uh, these relays would close and shut down the engine all right, so we just finished wiring everything up. Um, it should be ready to test. The fire boy is now in the normal position. It shows that the system is charged, so everything is uh, lined up properly how it should be when you're operating the vessel. So now we're gonna try and start the engines up and uh, they should fire right up first try. And then what we're gonna do is pull the lead off the pressure switch on the bottle over there, which is going to simulate activation of the uh, fire suppression system release and basically that should shut the engines down if everything is working properly. So let's go ahead and do that test. Okay, so you'll see there the system operated properly uh, upon the release of the bottle or the re release of the pressure, which was simulated by the uh, removing the lead off the pressure switch to make the circuit open. Both engines shut down, which is what's supposed to happen. So now let's plug the switch back in and restart the engine. close this video out here uh, we're able to get the engines back up and running so everything is good on that accord uh, basically we figured out that it was the fireboy fire suppression system in that relay box um, so what you want to do when you're troubleshooting an issue like that um, when we realize that both engines engines will crank up but they won't start is uh, look at something that's common between the the two systems so the two engines like what's going on between them that could be a safety interlock or a system shutdown or anything like that since it is happening and it's an identical issue on both engines. So we're able to work through the troubleshoot, identify that the problem was with the relay box. So please check out the link in the uh, description below. We'll have our website and our phone number listed and don't hesitate to call us if you have any engineering concerns on your yacht or vessel and we'd be happy to help you out.